Meet the Peterson Family. Our dad, the three Peterson brothers, and our families farm together in central Kansas. Our family farm started in 1882 and has been raising cattle and crops ever since. Please subscribe to this channel and give us a like and a comment if you enjoy the video. What do you think, Brighton? I think it's so pretty. It's kind of bright out, huh? Right. cattle runs across and the other side where we're going to sell today. I got a couple pens left to feed still. I was in that pen. I pulled out two. Uh, one was pretty thin and was up at the bunk but wasn't eating a whole lot with an appetite. The other one was actually fairly full but was laying down in the back of the pen and had a little bit of discharge out of its nose so I took both of them off. We'll get them a shot and see if we can get them eating a little bit better. Okay, I got two more in here I'm going to try to take out. I got a little mixed with these other three. I'll try to leave these ones up at the bunk, but I want 738 and 778. So I got them. I'll just try to let these other two back and leave the thin ones up here to go up to the chute. Okay, I got those two sorted off. The problem is these ones came off, they all knocked off the bunk. So I'll have to come back up after I'm done pulling. Most of the time, cattle stay eating while I pull out of there, but I didn't. I would say most people, if they heard the term pulling calves, would think like, you know, assisting with the birth of a baby calf. Um, but around here, pulling calves kind of has two different meanings. You have to go pull that one, kind of usually means, oh, well, I have to go up to the pen, pull it out because it's sick. But it can, of course, mean there's one that the mama needs help when they're having a baby. So this time of year in September when we're calving, I guess it can mean both of them, especially. Got the truck backed up, ready to load. I'll have to go get pin 8A. Okay, top, front, jailer full. We're gonna fill the bottom and the back. That's bring them up. We're gonna take off one smaller red one before we get them all up here. Okay, first six are almost out. Got another guy pulling in to unload. Busy day at the sale. I think they have over 3,500 head. At least that's what they told me when I consigned them. Just put in the new hay bale here. Cows love eating out of this Sioux Steel hay feeder. I also like the silage. So they come back here and they know there's some ration up here and they dig in there. Try to get a little out of it. So we got a package while we were at uh, while we were at Farm Progress show. These are the uh, Copperhead Ag Concave System uh, through Thunderstruck Ag. So we're going to spend some time on this guy. I like being able to uh, crack open the power lift door and uh, when the breeze is right we keep the shade 
and let a nice breeze blow through here. Okay, I'm starting with the disruptor kit uh, in the back half, the separator. I'm gonna be putting them on these grates and then I'll change out the uh, concaves. And then once these are in, um, all I'll need to change is some cover plates depending on the crop and how it's threshing. But for corn, I won't need any cover plates. We did do a test cut a few days ago. We were still waiting on these to get here and I was having a hard time threshing out this droughted out corn that shriveled up and the, the cobs are all spongy. Uh, we, we were glad to have these coming and are pretty hopeful they'll, they'll help us out a lot. Okay, I got these disruptors installed and the spacers. I started putting, started putting this one back in and then I remembered I, I probably need it open to be able to turn the rotor as I take these out. Because we had the shop do it last time um, and put these in. I haven't actually done it before. Some people do it all the time, so it can't be that hard. So I pull the pins and take this loose. Okay, I got all the bolts out. And uh, now I need to read the instructions again. If I'm doing anything wrong, I'm sure someone will let me know. Okay, the other side's done, so we're gonna put the cover back on. Kittle's doing vlogging. I'm not doing any vlogging. Oh, were you vlogging before? Yeah, That's... I did. I did. That's good. Got him in there. I got it leveled, which took a long time because my set nuts were like terrible to turn. I think I have everything zeroed out now. Now we're putting these shields back on. And uh, then I guess we'll go try it. It's getting a little late in the day, but... I guess I'll help my dad put shields back on. Off to the field. Hey, hold still. I don't know if drought and heat makes for more wasps. We just seem to have these wasps everywhere this year. They get in cabs and they get in the house. Not cool. So I talked to Jeremy from uh, Copperhead Ag uh, with the Copperhead Concaves from Thunderstruck Ag, and uh, he was talking to me about setting um, the combine for these concaves. And um, my ears, this is our uh, poorest field of corn. It got the least rain. So um, these ears were barely denting when they ran out of moisture and we had 105, and so everything just shriveled up and they're kind of raisins, pretty, pretty small kernels and squishy uh, cobs. Um, so he said set it by the diameter of the cobs, which are less than an inch, about 21 millimeter. And then I'm, I'm also going to set my sieves a little tighter than recommended. Um, and then we'll, we'll check how things are looking. It is still in neutral. Another noob mistake. I read that in the book four times, but I was doing other things. engaged okay that's better tiny cobs um, I'm still finding uh, some so I'm gonna I'm gonna tighten it up even more see if that helps there's guys Have some play time while the mamas eat. Good morning, people. Uh, my dad has 
He's feeding with the feed truck this morning. Uh, I'm gonna unhook his feed wagon, uh, the starter wagon. Uh, we're gonna use this tractor for binning the, the corn here closest to the place. So we got that corn bin empty. I think Greg filmed that. And now we're gonna fill it back up within less than a week later. Probably the lower quality corn going in the bin and we'll hire we'll haul the higher quality corn, the higher test weight corn, um, that's closer to the elevator anyway, to the elevator. Got a new bunch of calves in last night. Only 38 this week. They're a little cheaper last week than this, this week here. Is having a hard time getting a hold of any weaned ones, so these are more ballers. So they get to hay and about a pound of these 16% protein pellets and uh, a little bit of ration. Did some sorting this morning, took the pears off and then moved some breads to a different pen so we can see the calves a little easier. Okay, we're cutting. I've actually uh, almost got a grain cart full. It's um, probably about 75 bushel of the acre, so that's other side of the field might be a little better but uh, made some adjustments I did have to tighten it up a little more and then I, I sped it up a little more so I'd be interested what other people do in in drought stressed corn and a few scattered cobs with with some kernel still on them but for the most part we are getting it off and have a nice clean sample in the bin we're farming okay got the first load cut last night there we are on the hill now we're up on the Sioux steel bin to open the lid let's fill her up Corn. See if Kendall can get it in his first shot. Keep coming. Come back about two, two or three more feet. Not bad. Under. All right, this is the second load of corn going in the bin. We're doing it. Corn harvest, baby. I think our bin is going to go down just all the way around or whatever. But well, it's Kendall and I today, so Greg and Dad are over at Greg's place doing some things. So he's running grain car in between binning, and uh, he should be able to keep up since it's not as good corn, but I don't know how much he'll be able to run grain car for me. It may be 95 degrees outside, but my air conditioning is blocking out the haters. And I got my afternoon coffee because it's fall now. And there's high school football tonight and there's college football tomorrow. I don't care if it's still gonna be 100 degrees for another week. Off she goes. Okay, we got a couple loads. In here, it's warming up in here. 
corn is hot, but it's dry. So we'll, we'll probably run a fan on it as we get some cool nights. So on this part of the field, we we chopped the end rows off. Some of this had chinch bug damage. Also, we thought we were gonna chop kind of the bottom or the edge of this field for more silage, but then we didn't end up needing it. So we have a few like paths out here where we started chopping and did some down rows. And then we realized we weren't really gonna need the, the silage, so. Uh, we left it, so I'm kind of having to, it's kind of messing up my, my roads, but what could have been, that's probably a little high, I don't know, down in that low spot, it hung on longer and filled a lot better, and now we come back to earth. So we got our copperhead concaves in there. And we're getting the grain off good now. Uh, now we're up on the flat too, and so this is a this is a little better corn. Here we are cutting on the field that's called the Big Pivot, which had zero <laughs> pounds of water pumped on it. So the girls all with me, got the whole crew. the southeast of Celine football game on the uh, radio. The moonlight's not quite as bright as it was last night. Um, it was it was bright in the yard last night. I'm gonna take this semi back to the yard. Okay, it's a new day. It's game day. Go Cats. Uh, we take on Southeastern Missouri State today. Uh, so I'm heading out to go to that game, the season opener, later today, this afternoon. I'm gonna, gonna try to get some corn picked this morning. So we have two loads worth to bin. Nathan got the first one binned. I'm gonna go and bin the second one while he gets the combine going. Finishing up this field, we've got a strip left under the pivot. So I uh, turned on the face converter to move the pivot. But uh, look how overgrown with weeds it is because we didn't irrigate out of this pivot this year. So uh, gonna have to uh, wade through the weeds, and then go get that load from Nathan. He's already got his auger out, so. Well, he turned around for me, so uh, I don't have to drive so far. So the reason uh, we didn't run that pivot this year was because we didn't have any water in our irrigation pond that we pump out of um, here on the main farm. Uh, we have one pivot that irrigates out of the river, so we've been able to run that um, all summer, but this one here um, has just sat still. So it's being moved for the first time right now. It's coming out of the corn there. I can see it. And so uh, we'll move it out, out of the corn and then we'll, uh, we'll go uh, cut that corn that was under the pivot. You're probably wondering why I'm in uh, a polo and nicer clothes. Um, at my house there, uh, Burkana is manning the uh, wedding venue. So I was out there earlier parking people um, and I don't like wearing my work clothes. Um, I probably should have a K-State shirt on since K-State's playing right now. Both Nathan and I are listening to the game, Go Cats. And um, K-State's winning 14 to zero, so that's good. But uh, I'm, I'm catching Nathan's loads uh, and then in between watching the K-State game and then I fast forward through commercials on my phone so uh works out pretty nice i can multitask i can i can uh we can cut corn and we can also watch k-state play so but then every time i get a semi load i've got to run it uh, over to where dad's putting it in the the grain bin so then i don't get to watch the game but i can pretty much keep up uh, because of commercials at halftime 
All right, got the uh, end dump filled up. We're using our end dumps because we're dumping into the, the, the auger going into the bin. So not using our hopper bottom semis for this field of corn. We'll use those on Monday for, for the next field. Well, Nathan's still combining corn, but we're just filling up the trucks. We quit hauling, and Dad and I uh, are doing chores. Kendall is at the K-State game, so he's not here, uh, but uh, I'm doing chores for him. Got our big pile of silage. This is an 8,000-pound load of, uh, of feed, so about as full as this wagon gets. Industrial area in All right, let's see if I can... Uh... Get this. Combine's cutting under the pivot where I moved the pivot out of the way. And the cattle are all lined up at the bunk, eating feed. It's starting to feel like fall with the sunflowers blooming, both my field at home and these wild ones that pop up all over Kansas. It's a good feeling to be feeding cattle and all of this corn were combining it will go to cattle or at least most of it as you saw maybe in the beginning of the video um, we hauled out corn out of the Sioux steel grain bin um, to take to the grain elevator that was corn from last year so we fill this Sioux steel grain bin and then we feed corn out of it to the cattle year-round and then whatever we don't end up feeding we haul the rest of it to town um, so you make money feeding the cattle you also make money hopefully uh, holding it some years it's really paid to hold it throughout the year. Other years we wish we'd have just sold it at harvest, but it's hard to know and it's better to have uh, better to have cattle feed on hand than to run short. I think that'll about do it for today. Uh, once they cut that strip there, I think we're done with that field. And so we've got a couple hundred acres of corn out of the way, a couple hundred acres to go. Um, and of course we chopped all that corn uh, there at the end of July. So corn is, is we're getting getting good progress on it. I'm not sure uh, that we'll even have a soybean harvest. Soybeans are going downhill every day. It's been 100 degrees. It's been windy. Um, no rain in sight. So not sure we'll have a soybean harvest, but the corn has been pretty good, or at least average to above average. It's it's not been a failure. It would it, it would get a B or a C grade. The corn would. So. Um, the silage corn might even have gotten an A grade. It was it was pretty good. Grain corn, maybe a C. So average them together, get a B grade. That's not too bad. Soybeans, probably going to get an F. And then Milo is kind of yet to be determined, the sorghum. Um, we kind of need a rain to, to fill. And uh, I just don't think we're going to get one at this point. So uh, we'll have to put the money into cattle instead. That's what we've done for decades is, is run cheap feed through cattle to help supplement the dry, hot years, such as 2023 with income, and uh, as well as harvesting those failed crops for, for feed. We've done that quite a bit as well. So it's been a good day. Gonna go home and check on the uh, wedding venue, see how it's going, and then I'm gonna watch the second half of the K-State game. They're up 35-0 at halftime. I'd call that a success too. So overall, not a bad day. Thanks for watching, everyone. Check out our music videos linked in the description. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Snapchat, and explore our website, www.petersonfarmbrothers.com. See you guys next time.